My name is Steve and I just finished building my U-Gears mechanical model Roadster and I enjoyed every minute of it and I took my time and I ended up with a very nice beautiful model that I really enjoyed putting together. The instructions were very clear um, and following the pictures was very simple to do. I found a couple of um, sticky points so to speak when I tried to get it to run it had a little sluggish movement and I discovered I didn't have the proper amount of rubber bands I had about a half of them because I didn't follow the picture as well as I should have so a couple of other things that I wanted to point out that made this model much more successful for me where I found a couple of points where I needed to uh, redo them and one of the first points was, and I'm going to take the seats off so I can show it to you, was where there's part number 148 and 147. 147 is behind that gear, and parts number 148 are the six little round um, uh, pieces that go inside. They're like rollers. What I did was sand them too much and they ended up having a lot of wobble and a lot of play so it was important not to have that much play in there for me I got extra parts and just rebuilt it and it works it is so smooth and works very well another part for me that was where I found a little wobble and I had to um, uh, make sure it was nice and tight and make sure it was well lubricated was between part number 29 and part number 48, which is a perpendicular articulation between these two gears. Between this, it's hard to see in here, but it's that gear and where it goes with that gear that goes that way. So making sure that they work together very well, they fit nice, and that there's no uh, cracks or breaks. Speaking of cracks or breaks, I did break a couple of pieces and uh, I found that super glue worked exceptionally well. Just needed to let it set for a while and use some tweezers to put it together so that I don't glue my fingers. The third place I found where there was a sticky point was in the engine assembly towards with the parts that make the, um, the, the, the uh, cargo slow or in slow mode and it's this part up here that goes on the bottom of the engine and it's particularly part number 104 and 105 when and this part can tend to get hung up on part of the frame assembly and also could get hung up on the front end um, part number 110 that goes across where the uh, shock absorbers are and to make sure that this entire assembly was nice and tight and fit together very well and didn't have any bind to it at all. I also found that lubrication, particularly with the engine parts and the camshaft, so to speak, or the, uh, I'm sorry, drive shaft that acted like a cam, um, for the pistons was in the, um, using graphite instead of wax. And I use graphite a lot. It, and you can come in either a powder form, for which I just spray it on, so to speak, and then take a small little artist paintbrush and brush it on. And what I found also worked exceptionally well for all of my gears and anything where I needed nice lubrication on the drive shaft gears and any of the wheel assembly gears was using a carpenter's pencil with a long, sharp, not necessarily sharp, but just a long point. That way I could get lots of graphite and, uh, and it stayed well. So my model works exceptionally well after rebuilding it from going nowhere to now I'm able to get pretty close to about 25 feet on uh, the winding that's recommended of 30, 180 degree or half turns. I enjoyed building this model and looking forward to uh, getting my cabriolet and building that. I also did the Grand Prix car and had a lot of fun doing that. So. Uh, lessons learned for me, don't over sand, use graphite as a lubricant in addition to the wax. Take my time. If parts break and uh, they're not that critical, um, I can always use some crazy glue and it seems to work very well. 
Thank you very much, you gears. I'm very impressed with your materials, your instructions, and the engineering of these models. Just absolutely fantastic. Thank you.